So how was your web te text innovative in the historical or material or technological context in which it was created? Uh, it, it's hard to think about the web text as having an historical uh, content since it's relatively recent. Um, it's um, although I, that is relatively, it's <laughs> it's been maybe four or five years now. Um, it, already, there are probably ways in which it's, uh, it's difficult to view for some people because it's a, a flash piece uh, and depending upon what you have available you, you may not be able to watch it. Historically in terms of web texts I think or the web texts that we're talking about here that were Kairos it probably relates in many ways back to Ann Wysocki's uh, Booking Monument which was a self-contained uh, piece created in Macromedia Director and I, it, it was quite an influence on me uh, in thinking about what I might be able to do. I had never thought about being able to, to do those kinds of things until I saw Anne's work. So, so the early web texts had an influence on me um, in that sense. Um, materially, uh, Perhaps, perhaps the same thing. I used the tools that I had available to me, um, and I remember using Macromedia Director years ago uh, at the time that Anne was composing hers. Uh, I used the tools available to me that would enable me to do uh, the kinds of things that I wanted uh, to have things move on the screen, because for me that was uh, the most significant element of forward moving forward web web design. So when you say things moving on the screen, are you, you're talking about the small videos that are part of the, you know, on, that are on each of the pages? Right. Um, it, it was something that I had actually um, taped on, on my screen when I was composing for a long time, but it has to move. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about uh, the way text moved on or off the screen. Um, where the videos were, how they moved in relationship to one another, um, uh, because it seemed to me that uh, visual design wasn't just about um, still images, that it was about moving images uh, and uh, different parts of what you saw on the screen talking to different parts of your brain. And those videos you made, those all yourself? Yes. Yeah. Not in Flash, uh, I, though, necessarily. Um, I learned ActionScript in Flash. Uh, well, I, I, the, um, a lot of the material that I was working with already existed, but turning them into those moving images um, was, uh, was I, I did for the vast majority of them. You know, creating movies out of still images and so on. Well, I, I admire you for sticking with ActionScript when it switched over to ActionScript 3, which was such a radical different f difference from the earlier version of it. And at that point, I kind of, you know, Flash became a little too much for me. So you, 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 did you learn ActionScript 3 just for, the, for this project? Yes, I did. Wow. Impressive. But lots of fun. <laughs> lots of fun. Lots of fun. So maybe that goes into my second question, which is how do you see your web text as having influenced the tra trajectory of the field? Influencing the trajectory of the field. I, from the responses that I got to it uh, from lots of people, I think it stood as an example of what kinds of things could be done. Uh, and could be done from scratch by learning Flash, learning um, ActionScript 3. I think also it's, it has influenced people to not be afraid to try to make uh, beautiful texts rather than thinking that the rhetoric of the design should be um, more clinical. Uh, 
so I, in, in one sense that has to do with the trajectory of the kinds of things that, that we're now seeing uh, being uh, um, submitted to Kairos, which is very exciting. Uh, but, but maybe it's all about the tools. Maybe as the tools get better and you can do more, what you see is what you get editing that can give you um, these kinds of effects. Um, it, it's, it's just becoming more, more possible for people to do it. I think that's true, but I also think it's about the inspiration. I mean, you mentioned earlier Anne Wysocki as kind of an inspiration for your web text. And I think, you know, back then, okay, it was only five years ago, but still back then, there were a couple of different paths that people were thinking about when they were creating web text. And, you know, there's kind of this efficiency of use and clear navigation and all this, you know, everything has to be like as, uh, you know, user-friendly as possible. And then on the other side was, you know, well, let's make this more of an experience, you know, with some beauty and, like you said, some, you know, uh, the des- make the design lovely, not just efficient. And so I think the fact that your inspiration came from Anne, you know, that kind of came in t- to play in how you thought about design and how you wanted to construct the site, the the web text. Uh, certainly, that's true, and I I do think that that my mine was um, influential in the same way. Although there was pushback, uh, the the fact that I did not want to explain the visual arguments that I was making that were separate from the textual textual arguments uh, that people were reading on the screen. Um, I, I had well, it, it's the same kind of pushback that people often have just for visual rhetoric uh, compared to textual rhetoric uh, that it's ambiguous. Um, and setting aside the fact that text is also ambiguous, if we say a word like freedom, you know, what could be more ambiguous than that in, um, in the parlance of all of the people who use the word? Um, but I, I think that even though for making each of those little, little pieces, um, I'm, somebody's knocking on my door. So what were we talking about? Oh, um, the, that ambiguity, I think, is built into any text. And even though I had a particular thing in mind when I was making each of them, if someone else interprets it differently or sees it differently um, or uh, places it differently within the argument um, or, or their, their, their own context of, of, of their own knowledges and work, that's fine. Um, and and I, I even in a scholarly work that that's fine that there be in ambiguity. I, and I think it's not. I think the one of the reasons for letting that exist, you know, having the, the images moving and then the, alongside the text and that kind of ambiguity is also the, for the experience of the reader. And I think at, at that point, anyway, you know, again, thinking about kind of the trajectory of web text up until then really the experience experience of the reader or the user was really I think navigation and clicking links and so on and I think you had a broader sense of what kind of experience you wanted to give readers right yeah um, I, uh, I I have been um, influenced uh, by Nathan Shedroff's experience design the, the, the book and the idea uh, although I I think I, I think that there are other kinds of experiences. I love navigating um, your between modes uh, be, uh, because it's it's uh, it's it's visually integrated navigation in a way that just a, a, a plain link or a, a labeled image would would not be. And that's I think that's another key thing and a kind of a question I have for you, I guess. Um, it's not really a question, it's more of a comment, but just the idea of design as meaningful. And I think that's really a crucial way to think, or a crucial element of web text to think to think about, the meaningfulness of design. But then also in your, um, in your Inventio piece, you talked about the design as influencing the meaning and how in your composing process, as you were thinking about the design, your argument actually shifted and changed. I thought that was so interesting. Right, and, and that piece but the Inventio piece was so much fun to write because it did make me in, 
it called attention for me to uh, the, the radical shift that I experienced when I realized that everything is in play when it comes to design. Uh, there, uh, of course, there are limitations, but you, sh you should always ask a question about whether a particular format, a particular size, a particular um, uh, use of uh, video clips, whatever it is that you're doing, whether you're doing it the way you're doing it or using it as you're using it, because that's the way your medium is designed to bring it in, or are you using it that way uh, in a conscious manner? Are there other ways that you can do besides the default? Um, and uh, I, I love thinking about that. Yeah, and maybe that's a characteristic of a lot of the best web texts is that they find new ways for the to think about design and integrate design into the into the meaning of the text or into the you know point that the text is trying to make. 